Driver and iron swing. So are they different? Should you play these clubs in a different way? Let's really dig down and show you how they are very different and give you some ideas of maybe how to feel that they are more different so you have more success with the driver as well as the iron when you play. So let's kick off with stance. Let me just hit three shots here. Nine iron to begin. And I'm trying to hit like a good distance, fullish nine. So that nine iron's flown 138 yards. My attack angle with the nine iron, I was hitting four, nearly five degrees down. Let's hit a seven iron. Again, trying to hit like my full seven iron. Not flat, flat out, but like a fullish one. So that's flown 160 yards. My angle of attack on that one was 4.6 down, so very similar to the nine iron. Then let's smash the driver. Not the best hit, but nice and straight. Definitely trying to hit that as hard as I can. I've got 110 mile an hour club head speed. The strike wasn't quite there. 262 carry. Got it down the bottom. So what were the setup qualities that were different with those clubs to enable me to hit four to five down with the irons to nearly four up with my driver? These swings are not the same. So if we look at the nine iron, I'm 16.9 inches wide with my stance, left foot here, right foot here. Um, ball position, a fraction forward, a center of my stance. This is creating 84 miles an hour club head speed. This is my seven iron, 18 inches, so very similar, creating 89 miles an hour club head speed. We'll talk about where this comes from in a second. 4.7 angle of attack, very similar to what we got with the nine iron, but very similar between the nine, ball position, and width of stance. Everything I'm doing there, relatively similar. Now, if we jump to the driver, we see a 20 and a half inches width for stance. Instantly, we go wider to try and create this extra ball speed. Also, the ball goes forward in my stance, which then in turn creates a fraction more tilt in my upper body. So fundamental changes in width for stance, which will come to why I'm using a more, what I would call powerful base to a more comfortable base with the irons, which we'll show you in a second. Other fundamental differences, obviously the ball's further away, but at the top end here, it feels very similar. So where my hands are feels very similar. The ball more in the middle of my stance, encouraging that slightly more downward blow, that ball up towards left here with the driver, encouraging that slight more up attack angle to try and send it for max distance. The other thing that then changes is because the ball is forward, it's more of a reach for this driver that gives me a little bit more tilt, but it's less of a reach with the iron, which gives me a tiny bit of tilt. Because remember, you've got one arm or one hand lower than the other on the club, which is always going to give you a slight tilt in setup behind the ball. Key mistakes I see people make, if they do change ball position, they don't put the tilts in, so they do reach with their whole body up for that driver. So they're trying to really get the feeling that they've got with their iron into their driver, where I'm feeling different, my driver, I feel more behind it, where my iron, I feel a little bit more on top of that. You can see it on the screen here where my left ear is kind of front of the ball with the iron, where with the driver, my left ear is a good inch behind the ball. And this is a pattern you're gonna see throughout the swing. So as we move the swings on to different positions, so top of the backswing with the iron, you see my left ear is barely moved, where with the driver I've pulled away from the ball a little bit more. If we come down into impact, again, left ear pretty much on the ball, so I'm feeling like I'm turning on top of it, where with the driver, again, I feel like I'm further behind it. So I'm using my setup to encourage what to me feels a more on top of the ball swing with my iron to a slightly behind the ball rotating push with my driver. Driver I'm trying to send forward and up. Iron, I actually feel like I'm hitting slightly down at it and letting the loft get that ball popping up in the air. My setup is encouraging the better movements. Now the next huge difference that I make in my action here is we're gonna just use the vertical force, this blue, graph here on both of these swings. So one's a seven, one's a, on the left here is my driver. So I'm peaking at 209% with my driver of vertical force, where with my iron, I'm peaking at 191. And if we move that down to a nine iron, we're gonna see that's even lower. So nine iron peaking at 179. So what is vertical force and why is it important? Well, vertical force is basically how much I'm pushing in and then out of the ground. It's my vertical jump. And I'm using that force, so I'm using how much I push down and push up to change the club head speeds 
and to change the angle of attack. So a couple of common patterns for me and for many golfers. If I increase my vertical force at the right time, so I push down and get out of my left leg harder. So basically I feel like I'm pushing my toes into the ground and towards the launch monitor here, which then pushes back of me and sends me up and out. That makes me feel I can hit the ball a lot harder. Now with the ball set forward in my stance and these tilts, if I do that, the other thing we start to see with the driver is that helps me hit up at the ball. Now I'm just gonna show you another swing. Now there's two key differences you're gonna see here. Obviously his vertical force is considerably less than mine, 154 to 209 peaking. But look how much lower my hands are and higher the club is. So what we see at our peaks of vertical is that my hands are lower, club higher, but I'm literally now gonna jump, which will send that club down, hands up. Where for this player, he's lining up. Unfortunately, it's really hard for him from here to actually hit up at this ball. He tends to hit down, hits lots of sky balls. Again, look at the angles in our body, very different. This is something he could work on, but it's often to do with the way people are using or not using this vertical force. So with the ball position set forward and the angles that I'm creating in my body, what happens if I create a lot of vertical force, so basically push down on my left foot, then start pushing up, what that does is it starts sending that club down and the hands start coming up, giving me a better chance of bottoming out early. For our other player there creating less force, he's basically lining everything up, which unfortunately for him, because he's so far forward, hasn't got the angles, which is such a common mistake with people with drivers, he's now just gonna hit straight down at this ball. I think he was measured about three down. And that for him encouraged a lot of sky balls where he just wasn't getting anything out of it and it's popping up in the air. So let's think what that means to you. When you go and practice next with your iron to kick us off, obviously I want you to think about your ball position being a little bit more centered. I'm gonna do a more in, in kind of depth video on ball position coming soon. Let me know in the comments down below if you're keen to see that. Your width for stance is going to be around, so the inside of your feet kind of hip width. So you're not gonna to get too crazy aggressive. Now what I want you to do is I want you to try two different swings. So I want you to do a swing where you feel that you make a back swing where you move into your right foot, push down on that left foot hard and then push up. And I want you to see what happens to the results. So distances, shapes, quality of strike. I want you to rate all those as you do this feeling. So that's a 163 carried seven iron. Now I want you to do another swing and this is gonna feel really odd. And I want you to stand with your seven iron, but I want you to really push both feet out. So really turn them out and feel like you're really sat on your heels so that you can feel your heels touching the ground. And then from this one, I want you to feel like you're keeping those heels on the ground and just turning shoulders, turning hips and hit a few shots and just measure what that does to again, direction, shot shape. You'll see these are two slightly different shot shapes. One was a fraction draw, that was a slight cut. That's now gone down to one four four distance. So by me playing a swing where I took out the chances of vertical and built it all around rotation, gave me what felt like a very accurate shot. It gave me a shot that felt like I could hit a precise distance, but it didn't give me my flat out power shot. I'm gonna use both of these options playing my iron if my setup is in place. So rather than obviously play golf this way, what you can do, set up in your normal setup, but you're gonna to have to feel that you're turning more onto your heels. So heel right foot, heel to all of your left foot, turning around what feels like a really flat based left foot. So again, it's gonna feel rotational, good setup, ball in the middle, left ear on the back of the ball, rotate, rotate onto the heel, so for me, I can see I've just pulled that one. So that's something I would log in my head. So next time I play, I might aim it a bit right or hit a few more to see if that's a pattern. But again, that's going one, four, six. I can find a 150 yard seven iron, an easy flighted seven iron. But I want to now hit my seven iron a little bit more like the force I use with my driver. All I'm gonna do is everything else the same, but I'm gonna load into my left toe and push with my left toe, again, down and forward towards the launch monitor a bit more. So back swing into heel, down swing into toe as hard as I can. The floor will push back at you. It pushes you out. You see my left foot slightly jumps a little bit there. And now we've got a seven iron going quite a different distance. Both very gameable shots. So I'm using my ball position 
left ear over the ball to try and help with angle of attack being in the right place. Then I'm using how I push on this ground, if I choose to really push hard or if I just choose to rotate around my feet to control distance. I in play, there's a time when it does need the max out. Most of the time, for most golfers, it is about controlling that exact distance. Those are two different swings within an iron, one a bit closer to the driver, one very much a kind of gentle iron swing, but both would allow you to score better if you can use them. Now driver, very rarely will I do the second swing with the driver. So the driver for me, I'm chasing that ball up in my stance up towards that heel. I'm making sure my left ear is kind of in line with the head of the club, a bit more of a wider stance. And then I'm gonna turn into right foot, hard down into left toe, like as hard as I can to try and get out of it. Just lost my balance a little bit, but it didn't affect the club path. That's a pretty, that's a line ball. Oh. And we got a drive carrying 271. And as you could see there, massive differences in how I tried to push on the ground. My setup set me in the right place to try and control angle of attack. The way I pushed and then got out of that left foot allowed this club to come up and the head to come down a little earlier, which encourages that upward attack rather than a very common move that we see from the other golfer, not much vertical, staying in left and turning. And then basically it's the kind of spearing it down into the ground. The club just can't get down in time to ever get up. We see the downward attack that often goes left. People start chopping it, hit sky balls. It's not the same, the driver and the iron swing. They can be similar, but the ball position and setup changes those angles. But generally with the driver, I'm using a down and push harder attack to get the right attack with the club and in turn the distance I need. Now, if you want to practice a few drivers as well, like the iron, it can work because there's times where you want to hit a softer driver, still ball position forward. You can splay both feet. And again, just feel like you're rotating and not pushing off the ground. What you're going to find is a very different distance and shot. Again, I see a bit more of a cut in that one for me. This is a soft driver. Apart from my setup, it resembles some kind of eye and ideas of hitting exact distance. And that one's carrying 233. I could push the speed, I rotate a little bit more. It's a very rare shot that you play with a driver. It's one you can practice. Basically the main shot with your driver will be maxing out because I can hit a free with that distance. So I would just club back to that. But when it comes to iron play, where distance is the exact goal, so not how far you can send it, exactly how far you can send it. So can I hit it 140, 147, 143? Land angles are gonna be more important. Can I get it to land and skip up that slope? Can I get it to land and stop? Those kind of ideas. This is now where you are gonna use the variation of those two moves. But what you can see from these, very different setup positions, very different use of how I swing that club to try and get the different power sources onto that ball and very different timings of when I use that force. Look at the driver, I'm peaking my verticals when the club is still above my hands, where with the iron, I'm more in my left and flatter against my left Look, You get a little bit more of the heel poking into the trace here on the ground where it's heavy red in the toe of my driver. So the iron, the club is now lower than my hands when I peak my vertical because I'm not trying to hit this flat, flat, flat out. I'm not trying to jump, I'm trying to hit a distance where this one I am literally jumping at it. Iron to driver is a very different swing and that's so many students I see as I measure more and more blend these two clubs and don't appreciate the difference between the two next time you're practicing. I think we all can understand some of the fundamentals in the setup that can relate but how hard you're pushing with the driver and trying to push out with the driver compared with a seven iron or a medium iron where you're doing a bit of that sometimes and then just turning around left foot when you want to hit like the most accurate one. You might find you're more accurate the other way. Again, it's something you need to test. They're very, very different disciplines, which is why one of them I'm hitting four up and the other one I'm hitting four down. And you can kind of see why when we bury down into how I'm pushing on the ground and using the forces to try and apply it with the club down to that ball. Thanks for watching. Let me know if this helps. Let me know if you want to see more of these. I, um, it's so good looking at how people push on the ground. It's so good at watching actually what they do do and measure it rather than maybe just filling up the world with more cliche, cliche golf, which I find as I measure more people tends to get them unstuck more than help them.